so I've started to think because the schemes that go on in the background, especially at the Asia level and in London, as they both have great communication, tend to be years ahead. Although some people's thinking, like myself, are also years ahead. So back in 2014, when ASIO had me become the leader of their infamous group, noting that it's multifaceted, as I've explained a hundred times, for the police, these were their motives. For ASIO, these were their motives. For the media, these were their motives. And they're all, there's never just one. There's a whole bunch of them. And yep, yep, perfect, perfect, perfect. All the stars aligned. And with me, these were my motives. I've explained my motives. I've explained them all. But then I'd like to understand what else were the motives of Asia in terms of who they may have been doing bidding for. So I was made the president of this national organisation at the last minute. It was a fucking shock to me more than anything. Me, chosen as the ADL president, an organisation that no one ever heard of, but nonetheless the way it was put together the, the contract thing I read and signed and all of it was ob- it was clearly uh, defence related, it was clearly like a patriotic thing as a, and I thought to myself I love my country, that's always been clear, I'm a proud Australian but it's not white Australian and these pricks know it why the fuck would they make me the president of a rather white Australian thing but because I'm an Australian and proud to be, it, it, it doesn't make a difference. Well, it doesn't make a difference, but it, it, not being Australian, it's, it's, I'm not going to fucking give you an essay on this. But the point is, it was it was quite out of the ordinary. But what London knew for certain is that Robert Abela, now the Maltese Prime Minister, was going from strength to strength, his father being the president of Malta, George Abella. And then obviously you've got Carmelo Abella, uh, Minister for National Security, also a federal member, some other Abella, and I think there's another Abella. It's like three or four Abellas in Parliament. Um, it's, it starts to look like a dynasty, but that's just garbage. They're just politicians, and good at it. And the people love them. So that's always been the case since the 1300s. And now it's proven because he's sticking up for the average person in Gozo against millionaires. So he is for the people. It's no small talk either. But anyway, that's beside the point. They knew that he was venturing on a successful uh, political career. And while you may think the turn, the, uh, the role of president is a greater honour in Malta than the Prime Minister, no. Uh, for the Maltese, the role of Prime Minister is, in effect, the most sought out position on Malta. So you're, it's when you're the Prime Minister, in other words, that you're the King of Malta. Technically speaking, the president has full powers, Yes, it's true. Full constitutional powers and etc. But what gets exercised on a day-to-day basis is obviously the Prime Minister's field. It's the Prime Minister of Malta that gets the big accolade. In America, it's different again. They don't have a Prime Minister. It's the President. Things, things are different in many countries. But it's you see, it's very similar to England. In England, the Prime Minister is pretty much the King of England, and not the King. The King is ceremonial. He sits there and farts on his hand all day and does nothing. Whereas the Prime Minister is the one pulling all the strings. That's always how it's been. So, in England, I think it's Downing Street. In Malta, it's Castile. Castile being the original place of the Knights of St. John, uh, their headquarters. Or their, their auberge, I should say. So that's the that's where you'll find the prime minister at Castile. <laughs> Fucking love that. But London knew that he was venturing down that most 
honourable path that, you know, being the Prime Minister of Malta and having all, having full function of Malta and what that entailed. But London also know that this Abella history has always been anti-British, anti-London from the very get-go, from the moment they stepped into Malta. The first fight they had was with a knight whose surname was Abella who refused to take off his cloak, his uh, his cape, in other words. He uh, and they kicked him off the island. The British did, and he was resentful. He wanted to he wanted to kill every. He plotted and planned. He wanted to kill every British on the island. He was pissed. So at the very at the very beginnings of British Malta, they picked a fight with the Abellas from the get go, and they picked the wrong fight. So it's they knew that he was eventually going to become the Prime Minister. They just knew it. They know these statistics. They know all these things. They just have... They account for that. And the British still think in their very sad minds that Malta's a place for them to have a say over, when that's just not the case. They've got no say. Um, they, it doesn't work like that. I wonder how they'd feel if Malta start to bully them and force them to uh, concede London and all sorts of things. I wonder if they'd like it. Because the Maltese can do that. Um, but anyway, that's beside the point again. So they knew that he was going to be the Prime Minister. And the Abella stance is there will be no warships in Malta. There will be no... There will be nothing. Zilch. Malta is not a British safe haven and a place for them to wage war. This is a peaceful island and will conduct our military affairs. And this is as much as Britain can get while we're in power. And they know the Abellas are like that. And they hate it. They sort of grasp that when uh, the Abellas, Joe Abella, started the Maltese military in the 60s. When the British left, they needed someone to recommence military operations in Malta. And it was uh, Joe Abella who started the Maltese military a startup fuck you gotta love that so these Abellas have always been right at the fucking centre of everything that's happened in Malta but <laughs> the point is they knew this they would, they absolutely know this. this is British intelligence we're talking about so did they want Asia on behalf of their mates in London did they want a bad name among Abella men Whatever they could fucking put together. So, they could push politics in the favour of those who are very much prepared to lick and eat the arse of Londoners in their administration. Who also fund Maltese newspapers and have their say in Malta still to this day. Just because they left in 64 doesn't mean they don't have a little base there. So, they're not going to get their way with an Abella head of the as head of the government. Why did they make me, of all 25 million persons, in 2014, the head of Australia, the Australian Defence League, or at least a head, I shouldn't say the head, it was Ralph. Uh, they did portray me as the president of the whole thing once, but anyway. Why did they do that? Why did they do that? 